Have you ever gone out of your way to collect coins in Mario? You probably haven't, and why should you? Most Mario games put them in hard to reach spots, or hidden inside blocks, and when the game rewards you with so many 1-ups, actively going for 100 of these things for one extra life isn't really worth it. But what if you tried to collect all of them and beat the game? That's what we're here to find out today. The goal is to play every stage until Final Bowser, and we must grab every single coin, including those inside blocks, P-switches and any surrounding coins it creates, red coins, and every star coin. The only coins we won't count are from enemies, simply because there's so many inconsistencies with coins respawning and certain enemies having coins and others not. So let's get to it with 1-1. One, one. 30 seconds in, I pondered if this was gonna be a cakewalk or not, but then I hit underground and saw my mortal enemy. P switches. Okay, it really wasn't that bad. It did take a couple tries to nab all the coins, but it was all good. Then I ran into these coin blocks you have to pound over and over, and remembered that you get a burst of five coins when you empty the block out. That doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, try doing this with two death pits side by side. No matter how quickly I moved, I always lost a couple coins, and I thought I was stumped at level 1 1 from a block. But alas, Mario Bros. Wii has a future to save the day. Multiplayer! Now, I don't have anyone nearby to play with, but I whipped out another controller, played the whole level again, got to this block, and then... What the f- Okay, so now I get godlike luck? After all of that, I discovered the flowers on the grounds also have coins in them. So that means I had to go all the way back to the beginning to get the coins I missed and finally beat the level. 1-2 involved a ton of brick breaking since I didn't know which bricks had coins and which didn't. There was a P-switch room too, but it was pretty easy. 1-3 was no problem as well, but I've come to the conclusion that these flowers suck. Having to constantly stop to get one measly coin from every flower is just monotonous and boring. After getting the alt route in 1-3, I unlocked the cannon and decided to check if there were coins there because I've never really paid attention until now. And lo and behold, there are a few stragglers. So to keep things moving smoothly, every single cannon level in this game is possible. If that wasn't already obvious. Next was one mid castle. Around the end, there was a split path. The left side had a few regular coins, while the right had a star coin. As one player, it's impossible to get both at the same time, but I just used Luigi and swapped controllers to nab them all. 1-4 is a slow going level, but also pretty simple. And the same goes for 1-5. A lot of these levels just don't have a lot to write home about. 1-6 has a P-switch that I thought was gonna spawn a million coins and ruin my chances, but no, it spawns like 20 and it's easy peasy. One castle was simple enough until I went for the third star coin. I used the P-switch and got all the coins, but now there's a bunch of coins hovering right above the lava. For one guy, this makes this impossible, but Luigi was nice enough to volunteer and basically jump into a few coins, die, and repeat the process till he got all of them. What a nice guy. And that's it for World 1, so now on to World 2. 2-1's Two only struggle is with this coin block, since the spray of coins kept falling down the death pit but with good RNG and putting Luigi in the right spot, I was able to nab all these eventually. 2-2 two -two seemed to be okay too, until I hit this P-switch on the way to the first star coin. Yeah, let's come back to this later. 2-3 is a really dark level, but with some patience, it's pretty easy to grab all the coins. 2 mid castle was more of the same, nothing too challenging. Upon entering 2-4, there's a huge, huge problem. Not only is there annoying wind to deal with, but there's tons of coins flying through the air. And even with four players, it would be a crazy task to grab every coin in the air on top of the ones on the ground. So is this it? Does our journey of collecting every coin end here? Well, I'm actually gonna say no and that the coins in the air don't count. And I have a reason for this, trust me. The fact of the matter is that these coins infinitely respawn, unlike all the other coins in the game. So not even a task bot could complete this. For the sake of playing through more levels, and for those that still think my journey should end here or I should just take a cannon instead, I've made a compromise to avoid all the coins in the air while also collecting the coins on the ground. And my god, was this stupid hard. I can't even begin to explain the frustration I had to pull this crap off. It was so easy to mess up because the coins in the wind always seemed to get in my way no matter what I did. But after hundreds and hundreds of tries, I did eventually beat this. So after that nonsense, 2-5 was a lot easier. 
Like it too was kind of annoying to deal with, considering how many coins there were in the sky, but it was a simple level. 2-6 has a P-Switch section where you have to basically play perfect to get all the blue and yellow coins from the bricks, but it's definitely possible. Now 2-Castle was an overtaking. There's a section where there's tons of coins near the lava, so what I had to do was use the propeller suit to very carefully grab them while staying alive at the same time. It took forever to learn the timing and the practice it, but I was able to grab them all. Thank god this level gives you tons of time to work with. And would you look at that, that's all the levels in World 2. We will come back to level 2-2 later, but now to World 3. 3-1 is a nice simple start, the coins are all easy to grab here. And the same goes for 3-2 as well as 3-3. 3 Ghost House was quite the doozy when going for the alt route near the end. There's a room where the floor slowly falls to the ground, but also has moments where it shoots down to the ground too. The coins are spread all over this room too, so it's impossible with one person. So I had Luigi by my side, and I basically had to memorize where all the coins were gonna be to do this. And after some tries, I eventually got it. 3 Mid Castle wasn't too bad. I did have to be quick when the spikes came in, but otherwise it was more than doable. 3 4 and 3 5 are the levels where you have to play through with and without enabling the red switch, but both of them were a cakewalk. 3 5 did look impossible because it's an air based auto scroller, but moving quickly denied my worries. And now to 3 Castle, and my god, this level was brutal. This is one of those snake block auto scrollers, and near the beginning is a coin block. This coin block is the reason I about went insane playing this. Trying to get all the coins, including the burst at the end, requires stupidly fast and precise movement. What I had to do was jump early, twirl and hit the block perfectly, and land just as the block came in. Then I had to spam jump with perfect inputs, grab the burst of coins with barely enough time to spare. But we aren't done there. I had to grab more coins in the air, ground pound on this block for a coin, and run through this spike part without completely dying or messing up. Ugh, and then after that, there's even more coins above this pile of spikes that I wasn't able to get without a propeller suit, which I had to sacrifice earlier. So what was I supposed to do? Well, I would have been screwed if I didn't have Luigi behind me, so I just used his propeller suit and got the rest of the coins. And that is all for World 3. Now before tackling World 4, we need to visit our old pal 2-2. I waited to do this because I knew I needed the penguin suit to have a chance, and you can't get that power up until World 3. What I have to do is emulate that crazy hint movie where you use four players to grab all the P-Switch coins. Now me controlling four players, that can't be done, right? That's right, I actually pulled this crap off on my own. It was like a crazy science experiment doing this, but now we know that 2-2 is possible. So on to 4-1. It wasn't too shabby, but I had to move fast considering I barely made it in time. 4-2 was also easy and one of the more fun levels to play through. 4-3 was a knockout too until these last three coins. They're placed higher than they look. Basically, I had to do a triple jump off this tree to reach them. And honestly, the rest of World 4 is easy. 4 Mid Castle has very few coins, 4 4 has a stingy P switch block, but it's not that hard, 4 Ghost House has some hard to reach coins, but they're more than possible, 4 5 is an easy Lekitu level, 4 Castle is much easier than 3 Castle, and 4 Airship is also pretty simple. And that's everything in World 4. It was all just kind of a walk in the park. So on to World 5. 5-1 Five reintroduces those freaking flowers. I mean, it's not like they're hard or anything, but they're just a pain to collect individually. But anyway, on to 5-2. It's a cakewalk even with all these wigglers around. 5 Mid Castle is also no problem as long as you're patient with the spikes moving back and forth. 5-3 and 5-4 were both pretty easy to knock out too. 5 Ghost House was really annoying to get through because it has so many bricks to break. It took forever to break them all. There was one coin block in particular that's put in a spot where you can't ground pound it, and you can't jump underneath it either without dying. Now it is possible with a propeller suit, but even then, this level was just really tedious to get through. 5-5 five five may look intimidating, but it's actually not that bad with a propeller suit. The ending with the pal block is a bit challenging, but it's more than manageable. 5 Castle wasn't an issue either. I just needed to watch out for the fireballs. And that's everything in World 5. Again, most most of these levels were a breeze. But now on to 6-1 from World 6. There's a challenging P-Switch section, but besides that it's no problem. 6-2 was a breeze until I got to this third star coin. The star coin itself wasn't the problem, it was collecting the coins surrounding it. I mean, look how many there are. 
So I tried for probably 15 minutes, and I always found myself missing a few every single time. And I was about to give up until I decided to try it with a running start. And this actually made a subtle enough difference. After a few tries with this strategy, I managed to barely grab all the coins. I'm still surprised this was even possible. 6-3 had some annoying piranha plants, but getting all the coins was simple enough. 6-4 was possible too, and it was a fun level to run through. 6 mid castle is more of the same, there were very few coins to grab. 6-5 had the porky puffer, but with well-timed jumps, he wasn't too much of a nuisance. Now 6-6 six, six was just evil, no pun intended. It's a dark auto-scroller where you sit on the raft most of the time. Now my biggest hurdle, like most of these other levels, was a pesky coin block. This coin block in particular seemed to have more coins crammed in than usual, because my god, you need near-perfect inputs to get all these coins on top of the several others while also not getting stranded because that raft does not stop for anything. This level is possible, but goddamn, it took so long and it is so unforgiving. On a lighter note, Six Castle was a lot easier than expected, and Six Airship was also a pretty basic level. And that is every level in World 6. We're really starting to get close to the end of the game now. So on to World 7. 7-1 Seven re-reintroduces those damn flowers, but the level's easy. 7-2 is also pretty simple to knock out, and 7-3 has some annoying coins to grab, but it's more than possible. 7 Mid Castle has one coin block in the middle of a barrage of bullet bills, but even then you can still grab all the coins. Now 7 Ghost House, like all the other previous ones, is a drag to finish. There's another one of those floor-falling sections just like in 3 Ghost House, except now it's even more extreme. Even floating with the propeller suit, there was just no way I could grab all these arrow coins. There's just too many of them. Although I did manage to do it one time somehow, I think that was just dumb luck. So I decided to use Luigi once again to see if I could control both of them at the same time. And let me tell you, it took quite a while to figure out how to control them independently. It's a lot harder than you would think. But after several attempts, I started to figure out how to use them and eventually managed to grab all the coins. So while this was devilishly difficult, it was pretty satisfying to actually get all the coins in the end. After that madness, we move on to 7-4, which has some annoying coins to get, but it's much easier than what we just did. 7-5 is also a walk in the park, and for 7-6, all I'm gonna say is I'm glad the propeller suit exists or this would not be possible at all. 7 Castle was also a pretty easy level, and holy crap, we're at World 8 already. So this is it guys, 10 levels to go before taking out Bowser. Oh. Oh no. 8 1 doesn't just have one coin block to deal with, there's several throughout the whole level. Now, this normally wouldn't be a problem, but first things first, there's meteors raining down, destroying precious blocks that I need coins from, and second, there's poison gas creeping from behind if I go too slowly. I tried this level for a long time, but I just could not make any decent progress. Even if I were to try two players, or mini Mario or something, the problem is that the coin blocks just take too long to collect, and the meteors come down so frequently that I don't have a semblance of chance to actually grabbing them all. So, unfortunately, I have to say that it is not possible to collect every coin in New Super Mario Bros. Wii while beating the game. And it sucks because we got really, really close. Maybe if there wasn't any poison gas behind us, we could get lucky with the meteors, but this level is just too big an issue. Now, maybe there's a small chance you could do this with four really talented players together and routing which blocks to get, but even then, there's just too much going against you. And that is everything for today. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and thanks a bunch for watching. I'll catch you all later.